The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. of the impact on, on society I'd say COVID is a bit more um, harsh and, and slowing down the, the spread of the virus. People were barely accepting that microorganisms could cause disease um, but that sick people who had that disease might be able to transmit it but that well people would also be able to transmit it that was a step too far at the time and people did not really understand including physicians and other scientists did not understand that that was a possibility. Coronavirus, the pandemic that we have now. We've had coronaviruses, they're always there. They cause the common cold. Then we have SARS, we have MERS, now we have this one. How do you know, where is it gonna come from? And how do you know it's there until people start dying? This is what today looks like. Almost 33 million cases and a million deaths. All of it owing to just one thing, the COVID-19 pandemic. But as you might already know, this isn't the first pandemic that human civilization is facing. As far as one could trace back, the first ever pandemic was in the 165 AD, the Antonine Plague. Then, Plague of Justinian, the Black Death. Third cholera pandemic, flu pandemic. Sixth cholera pandemic, flu pandemic 1918. Asian flu, flu pandemic 1968, HIV AIDS pandemic at its peak between 2005 and 2012. Fortunately enough, most of us did not have to endure through these pandemics in the past. And this is where the world of art and movies and books steps in. Art has the strange power of transcending our minds into worlds and timelines we could never even hope to visit. And sometimes places which don't even exist in real life. And that's how writers and directors and artists have managed to take us to pandemics, even some non-existent pandemics from the past, but obviously without us suffering any consequences. Some of the most well-known movies and books related to pandemics include Outbreak, 28 Days Later, Carriers, Black Death, Contagion, Flu, The Last Days, 93 Days, Pandemic, and Cargo. We will be focusing on only a few of these for the sake of this video, Contagion and 93 Days along with a couple of books. We will be trying to break down the similarities and contrasts of these fictional on-screen pandemics with respect to today's corona pandemic. Diseases, especially widespread lethal pandemics, have always been a central theme in literature as they bring out the true horror of how it all takes is something small, throw the world into utter chaos. And in this period of a global pandemic, one turns to literature and art to come to terms with reality and place it in the context of history or simply marvel at some eerily accurate predictions in fiction. The first book we would like to showcase is a vivid reminder of the human side of disease and disease control surrounding the typhoid outbreak in the 1900s. This book, Typhoid Mary, captive to the public's health, tells the remarkable story of Mary Mallon, the real Typhoid Mary, and gives a remarkably vivid account of typhoid penned by Judith Walzer Levitt. I taught a course on the history of American public health, and I always had one class on Typhoid Mary and the questions that she raised. And I realized nobody had written about it. I wanted somebody to actually delve into the issues that she, that her story raises and to analyze them in a way that uh, students could relate to. So I started to write an article about her and it grew into a book. <laughs> One day the health department um, came knocking and said that they thought she was causing typhoid fever in the people she cooked for. And she thought it was a ridiculous idea, as most people of the time would have thought. Um, why would a healthy person be able to, to transmit disease? It just shows us that we have a lot in common with others who are from distant lands and different times, encouraging us to appreciate the fact that we are not the only ones who are dealing with the worldwide devastation wrought by the pandemic. Another book that highlights a pandemic, one that took place more than 100 years ago, is Flu the story of the great influenza pandemic of 1918 and the search for the virus that caused it by Gina Colata. How with the 1918 flu, what was really surprising to me was that that flu took place at a time when nobody had any way of even isolating the virus. You couldn't do a virus test. You couldn't make drugs against the virus. You didn't really know quite what this thing was. And yet, scientists, a hundred years, almost a hundred years later, managed to find remnants of that virus and reconstruct it. And they said, we, will, we can know exactly 
the genetic sequence of that. Even though most people who get infected recover, you have so many people infected that you end up with a lot of deaths. This worldwide pandemic is certainly not the first, nor will it be the last. The one thing that remains the same is that you kind of don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Similarities, dissimilarities, unexpected new virus, isolation is a primary tactic, better tech, concept of virus is known, medicine has progressed, different countries adopting different approaches, but no one has a good idea about what's actually happening. People are scared all over the world. The fears of a pandemic and the massive destruction that comes with it has been vividly highlighted in several movies. Over the period of lockdown, there has been a spurt in the popularity of these pandemic movies, which people can correlate to with their surroundings. The visual imagery in these films is quite similar to what we see around us. Well, could you spot any difference in the images? The reality is that some of them were scenes of films and some of them are the scenes of the COVID pandemic. Let's now take a look at the movie 93 Days. The film 93 Days recounts the 2014 Ebola outbreak in Nigeria and its successful containment at the first consultant's medical center. This is a viral infection, a serious infection. I think we have a problem developing here. Nigeria was a mere spectator to the deadly Ebola crisis, sweeping West Africa, but now there are fears that country could be on the verge of becoming the next hot zone for the virus, with health officials there warning every nation and every individual is at risk. The film highlights the effectiveness of the most crucial step taken by Nigeria, the strict quarantining of the index case. Despite swift protests and using the existing infrastructure for polio for effective contact tracing. The two things, the strict quarantining, yes, but also very proactive contact tracing. Those are the two things that were important. Um, once Patrick Sawyer, uh, Sawyer came into first consultant, and once it was, you know, um, diagnosed that that was what he had, um, against his will, he was stopped from, from, from leaving the hospital. The film vividly portrays the fear surrounding the minds of people during a pandemic, with visual imagery reminding people of its deadly impact. What, what we did with um, 93 Days was to say, look here, here are a set of people who, when faced with a situation to flee or fight, chose to fight on our behalf as a people. They stood between us as Nigerians and a very deadly virus. The story of 93 days is the story of what could have been, what was averted. That's what the story of 93 days is. The 2011 movie Contagion is suddenly everywhere in the news as it eerily, even prophetically predicts the outbreak of a deadly virus that causes a pandemic. Contagion follows the rapid progress of a lethal airborne virus that kills within days as the worldwide medical community races to find a cure. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. The final scene in Contagion reveals that the fictional MAP1 virus originated from a pig that ate a piece of banana dropped by an infected bat escaping the destruction of its palm tree forest habitat in China. It is believed that the origin of the current coronavirus is likely a wet market in Wuhan, China. Both were cases of zoonotic spillovers. Sick people in the film experience fevers and profuse sweating, pounding headaches, sore throat and cough but also had seizures, dizziness and frothed at the mouth when they passed. In the movie The Virus Mev1, like COVID-19 or coronavirus incites panic and mass hoarding for a number of reasons, showing that it is all too easy to catastrophize and spiral out into overwhelming dread and panic. Contagion offers a realistic depiction with chilling images of empty airports, vacant cities and people quarantined in special wards or their homes itself, all of which can be identified within the current climate. There's a lot of misinformation too. A lot of crazy things you spread, weird ideas about drugs that might work or insane treatments like hydroxychloroquine that don't work. And so it's, it's a mixture of things that might be helpful and information that is important to have and a lot of, of information that really scares people unnecessarily. Who do you want to get it? Who, who should be first in line to get it? But you don't want the people, like it's supposed to say, the people who are first in line are the medical workers. Suppose they use up all the vaccines. Don't you want to give some to, I don't know, school teachers or 
um, ambulance drivers or something like that. So in each country you have to say, the country would have to say, these are our priorities for who gets it. And then you could do a weighted lottery. In the movie and reality, doctors, healthcare workers and medical staff members are leading the battle against the pandemic from the front, putting their own lives at risk with selfless determination for the sake of saving lives, they truly are our heroes in these challenging times. With COVID-19 changing our lifestyle like never before, we are sure to see it being interpreted in different forms and films in the times to come. If we come through this pandemic, many would perhaps be inspired to document their own personal tragedies and future fears. History repeats itself, with one growing wiser with experience. Literature and movies display the fight for a more equitable world, where healthcare is a right and not a privilege, and transparency in governance is a justified expectation and not just a pipe dream. All a man could win in the conflict between plague and life, says Camus, was knowledge and memories. 